must remember this A kiss is still a kiss A sigh is just a sigh The fundamental things apply as time goes by Hi, my name is Gavin Minter and uh, this video is brought to you by the Cape Town Music Academy as part of their daily music tips. Today, I would like to discuss the importance of listening. And I think this is one of the most important tools into finding the sound you love. Before I could play a note on, on basically any instrument, by listening to the music, I gathered a clear understanding of what sounds I loved. You know, I could listen to Train or, or Herbie Hancock and, 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 and feel how they, 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 they dealt with the harmony. And I could listen, I could hear Miles and hear how he used space in his music. I could listen to Winston Mankuku and hear how he cracked certain notes, and, which made me understand his personality more. I loved many singers. I loved the vibrato, the big vibrato that Sarah Vaughan had, or the lazy swing Sinatra had. Um, the, I loved the way Tony Bennett would belt out a ballad, but I also loved the way Chet Baker would sing a ballad very simply with very little vibrato. Also, this time in my life, when I did a lot of this listening, we didn't have access to thousands of titles we could just scroll through you know we had to wait for the new weather report or the new van morrison to come out and and it was an absolute experience we would take the record and read the liner notes and put the record on and play it endlessly and listen thoroughly and intently and i never really questioned <clears throat> why these artists would affect me so profoundly but all this because all this listening was done with very little musical knowledge and and very little understanding of how or why but i was a de but i was developing a sound that i could aspire to and i was being drawn to these sounds very simply by my heart and these essential characteristics i found in the players and the music i loved helped me attain an understanding of what i identified as something of beauty and this identification has guided me throughout my life because we as players have to decide what is, what is a thing of beauty for us. We can't assume that you know, a group of notes played in the right order with the right accompanying notes immediately becomes something of beauty. It, it may be. It might be correct. But we still, have to we still have to determine what that thing of beauty is for ourselves. It's like if somebody sat you down in front of a painting and said, oh, look at this painting, it's, it's beautiful. It's, um, it's a beautiful sunset. It's, it's, uh, look, look at the great technique. And uh, I can see that he's influenced by Rembrandt with the use of broad strokes. And it's a sunset. So he's used all the correct colors. There's a red there and there's an orange and a yellow and a bit of pink. And, and it's, um, it's beautiful. And you might look at this painting and go, hmm, I don't think it's that beautiful. And then the person will say, but it has all the ingredients of a great painting, of great art, I guess. But as always, beauty is always, will always be in the eye or the ear, as far as music goes, of the beholder. So... Put on a record, listen to it from top to bottom, listen intently, listen thoroughly, thoroughly, and remind yourself of the beauty found in music. The world will always welcome lovers as time goes by.